Hello everybody, getting ready to do 6.3 part 3 of pre-calculus math today. And today's lesson, part 3, vectors in the plane. you got 6 points here for your notebook, and then 54 points here on your, class, uh, on your classwork sheet. And today we're not going to go into a bell, we're going to go right to your notebook. Direction angles. So, if u is a unit vector such that theta is the angle measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis to u, then the terminal point of u lies on a unit circle and you have u equals xy equals cosine theta sine theta equals cosine theta i plus sine theta j as shown. So here's your diagram here that this refers to is right here. The angle theta is the direction angle, so here's your direction angle here of the vector u. Suppose that u is a unit vector, so <clears throat> we're going to suppose u is a unit vector with direction angle theta. If ai plus bj is any vector that makes an angle theta with a positive x-axis, here's your positive x-axis, then it has the same direction as u, and you can write v equals magnitude v multiplied by cosine theta sine theta would equal magnitude v multiplied by cosine theta i plus uh, magnitude v times sine theta j. For instance, the vector v of length 3, so vector v of length 3 that makes an angle of 30 degrees of the positive axes is given by these uh, manifestations here. So v would be 3 times the vector v of length 3, that would be out here, length 3, multiplied by cosine 30 degrees i, I mean, uh, citing this formulation up here, plus 3 times, again we're out here, 3 times sine 30 j, and then we plug in our exact values from here. Cosine 30 would be 3 times square root of 3 over 2i plus uh, 3 times uh, 1 half j would be how you would do that, where uh, magnitude equals 3. Because v, v, the vector v, equals ai plus bj equals magnitude v, cosine theta i plus magnitude v sine theta j, it follows that the direction angle theta for v is from tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. So we're going to start with a quotient identity, and then we're going to put uh, uh, magnitude v sine theta over magnitude v cosine theta, multiply numerator and denominator by magnitude v, which will equal b over a in that situation. And that would be a simplification of this, would be simplified to that b over a. Okay, so now we have that as a premise here. Let's find the direction angles of vectors. Find the direction angle of each vector. So we have u equals 3i plus 3j. So the direction angle in this situation here would be tan theta. We're going to use tan theta here. It will b over a would equal 3 over 3 here, would equal 1, using 3 over 3 here. So uh, theta, in this situation here, tan theta, if tan theta equals 1, then theta here would be 45 degrees, knowing that. Here's our 3, 3 out here, as shown. So Find the direction angle, here's our B part of this uh, example. Find the direction angle of, of B, where V equals 3i minus 4a, 4j. So we have a different situation here. Our tan theta is going to be negative 4 over 3. So we got this situation down here. Negative 4 over 3 would be down here. And then here's our theta here, would be 306.87. And moreover, because v equals 3, 3i minus 4j lies in quadrant 4, 
theta lies in quadrant four, and its reference angle would be th theta prime would equal arc tan of the negative four over three. And so our reference angle would be this here. This would be our reference angle. Would be negative 53.13 degrees, or 53, the absolute uh, value of that, would be 53.13 degrees. That would be our angle right here. So it follows that theta would equal 360 minus 53.13. I mean, that's how we got our 306.87 is taking the arctan of negative 4 over 3 would give us our uh, reference angle there that we use to figure what theta is. Okay, let's try one. Uh, find the magnitude and direction angle of the vector v. In this case, uh, v is negative 2i plus 5j down here. Well, let's do this one first. So, for this up here, v we know that, negative 2i plus 5j. So our uh, uh, magnitude here would be a square root of 29. And then our tan theta here would be negative, the negative of 5 over 2. Since v lies in quadrant 2, theta would equal 111.8 uh, in this situation here. And once you uh, graph these out and figure that, you will come up with 111.8 for 77 and then for 70 this one down here v equals 5 cosine 30 degrees i plus sine 30 degrees j our magnitude would equal 5 here here's our magnitude here and then our theta equals <clears throat> finding the component form of a vector so find the component form of the vector that represents the velocity of an airplane descending at a speed of 100 miles an hour. Here's our theta here, 210. At an angle of 30 degrees below the horizontal as shown. So we're 30 degrees below our 180 here, which will give us 210. And we got a, a speed of 100 here. So uh, that's our given. The velocity v, a vector v, has a magnitude of 100 in a direction angle of 210. So here's our formula here to plug in. Our vector equals uh, a magnitude of uh, magnitude v cosine theta i plus magnitude v sine theta j. So knowing that, we can plug in our values here. 100 multiplied by cosine 210 i plus 100 sine uh, times uh, uh, 210 degrees j. <clears throat> so we have this uh, situation here for exact values of those functions. And then when you multiply through here, we get negative 50 multiplying by a radical 3i minus 50j. And then so here would be our vector, negative 50 multiplying by radical 3 and then negative 50. You can check that V has a magnitude of 100 as follows. So to check our magnitude here, we uh, uh, put uh, the negative 50 uh, multiplying by radical 3 squared plus uh, negative 50 squared all underneath the radical. And once we do that multiplication, we get this number here. And we get square root of 10,000, which sure enough is 100. So our magnitude uh, does check from those other dimensions of this angle here. So let's try a problem here. A ball is thrown with an initial velocity of 70 feet per second. So we got 70 feet per second at an angle of 40 degrees. Here's our 40 degrees here. With a horizontal C figure here. So here's our horizontal. Here's our 40 degrees, 70 feet per second. Find the vertical and horizontal components of the velocity. So to do that, horizontal component of velocity is 70 cosine 40 degrees. So here is our magnitude, and then here is our component here, uh, cosine 40. 
And then when we crank that out, we get 53.62 feet per second. Just by using these trig functions, we can figure our horizontal component of velocity, how, it, how quickly it's moving on the horizontal. And then the vertical component of, of the velocity, we use 70 sine. We're going to use sine for our vertical and then cosine for our horizontal. We get 70 sine 40 degrees. We'll come out to about 45 uh, feet per second using that same idea. And then down here, do I do this one for you? I do, but I do it like this. A left cable, right cable. Here's your setup here. I do this for you. I want you to fill in your blanks. I'm solving a system for U and V, tension of left cable, <clears throat> and then tension of right cable. I want you to do that on your own. And that's your classwork, page 10A. Okay, moving on now to our next example. Example 9, using vectors to determine weight. A force of uh, 600 pounds is required to pull a boat and trailer up a ramp inclined at 15 degrees. So here's our incline here where the vertical will be 15 degrees. So 600 pounds is required to pull it from the horizontal. Find a combined weight of the boat and trailer. So here is our requirement here of 600 pounds. So how do we solve this? <clears throat> Based on the figure, you can make the following observations. So our vector uh, here of BA, the magnitude of BA, which would be this here, BA equals force of gravity equals combined weight of boat and trailer. And then uh, BC here, this uh, uh, magnitude of this vector here equals force against the ramp. So we have force of gravity and then force against the ramp. And this is force of 600 is required to pull the trailer. <clears throat> okay, so moving on into this, the boat example here. Uh, the vector here, AC, equals force required to move boat up ramp, which equals 600 pounds. So we need a force to move the boat up the ramp. By construction, triangles BWD, so we get BWD and ABC. ABC are similar. So angle ABC is 15 degrees. Here's our, wait a minute, ABC. So here's our other 15 degree uh, angle there. In triangle ABC, you have sine 15. So ABC, here's sine 15 would equal AC over BA. So AC over BA, uh, which would be what? Uh, it would be our opposite over our hypotenuse, which is here. And then we go ahead and we plug in here. We know AC is 600. We plug that in. Sine 15 degrees equals 600 over BA here, which is right here. And then once we do that, we have BA equals uh, sin, uh, rather 600 over sine 15. And then our BA here becomes 2318. So the combined weight is approximately uh, 2318 uh, pounds. If it takes 600 pounds of force to move it, that's what we come up with there. So note that AC is parallel to the ramp. So AC here is parallel to the ramp. We do we do duly noted. So in this uh, problem now, let's try a problem. Uh, 99100. Use the figure to determine the tension in each cable supporting the load. So we got a 5,000 pound weight here, and then we have this cable here, this cable here, and then this cable here. So rope AC uh, will be uh, U equals 10I uh, uh, minus 24J. So 10I um, uh, minus 24J would be here. So we're making a um, right triangle here with this uh, line here. So our U here. We're going to use this as our magnitude of cosine of arctan 12 over 5i 
So 12 over 5i will be our, uh, let's see, where did we get, um, let's see, our 12 over 5i, and then sine of arctan 12 over 5j. So, let's see, 24 here, we got 24 here. Uh, so, this would be our altitude here. And this, we got 10, 24, and then 12, and then 10, and 24. The vector lies in quadrant 4, and its reference angle is arc 10, 12 over 5. So, this is, we've determined this from these calculations here from this triangle. So, our rope BC, this is rope AC, so this is from rope AC, and then rope BC here is, our vector is negative 20i minus 24j, so 24j for BC here. <coughs> the vector lies in at quadrant 3, and its reference angle is arctan 6 over 5. So determining those values for the lengths of our ropes, we go ahead and we plug that in to our uh, uh, to this formula here, the negative cosine of arctan 6 over 5i minus sine of arctan 6 over 5j. And then this is our result here from this calculation up here. It, there, it has to be five, uh, negative 5,000 j's because this is our weight here of the weight that we're trying to lift <clears throat> and then we come up with these uh, different uh, uh, formulations here cosine arctan 12 over 5 minus the uh, magnitude the negative magnitude of uh, v cosine arctan 6 over 5 equals 0 and then this formulation here would have to equal negative 5000 here so solving this system of equations yields uh, the uh, TAC equals uh, the magnitude would have to equal 3611 so that would be CAC would be would be here and then the BC would be this lower one here so that would come out to be in 2169 here once you plug this into your calculator these are the values that you should get for this cable problem here Okay, let's try another example. Using vectors to find speed and direction, an airplane is traveling at a speed 500 miles per hour with a bearing of 330 degrees at a fixed altitude with a negligible wind velocity as shown. <clears throat> so here's our airplane, 120 degree angle here, a 330 at a fixed, so 330 at a fixed, so... This would be your 30 degrees here. This would be straight up, and then it's, it's over to the left by 30 degrees. So that's why they get to 330. As the airplane reaches a certain point, it encounters a wind blowing with a velocity of 70 miles an hour. So uh, here's our wind velocity here, V1, V2, and then here's our V of our airplane. So we have an angle here of the difference where it blows the plane off course a little in the direction of north 45 degrees east so our difference here is 30 degrees uh, here's our 30 here and then our 45 or 15 degrees here is what we have what are the resultant speed and direction of the airplane so in this situation here our wind is blowing a little bit to the left of the airplane by 15 degrees Using the figure, the velocity of the airplane alone is uh, V1 uh, equals 500 cosine 120 sine 120. And when we crank that out, we get negative 250. And then uh, 250 multiplied by uh, radical. <clears throat> and the velocity of the wind is V2 here, which will be 70 multiplied by cosine 45 sine 45 and that cranks out to this to these values here so the velocity of the airplane in the wind is uh, v, velocity equals v1 plus v2 
So we're going to add the, the wind speed to it, and then we come up with this array here for a vector. And then when we combine like values here, we get negative 200.5 and 42.5. So what do we do with those values? Uh, the result speed of the airplane is, so, so this will be our magnitude here. We're going to find our magnitude. And then when we crank this out, we get 522.5 miles per hour. Finally, given that theta is the direction angle of the flight path and tan theta is 42.5 over negative 200.5, we get to negative 2.4065. And you have theta uh, equals 180 plus arc tan of negative 2.4065. And you'd have 112.6 degrees here for that angle there. So 112 would be about, what, 22.6 degrees. So it's going to blow it off course by 22.6 degrees. So you can use a graphing utility in degree mode to check this calculation as shown. And you do get that bearing of 330. So the true direction of the airplane is 337.4. And you get 112.564, this big gnarly number here, for the actual bearing of the airplane due to the wind there by using those different vectors. Okay, so here's our guided practice. We have an aviation issue here. An airplane is flying in a direction of 148. So here's our airplane direction here. See, 148 is 860 here. 860 kilometers per hour for the airplane. This is the original here of the direction of the airplane. And it's at airspeed of 860 kilometers per hour. Because of the wind, its ground speed and direction are 800 kilometers per hour. So it gets slowed down in 140 degrees, respectively. So it gets blown off course by about 8 degrees. Find the direction and speed of the wind. So we know how our airplane has been blown around and slowed down. So from that, we need to figure out what our direction and speed of the wind is. So to do that, we have our setup here for airspeed for the airplane is uh, 860 multiplying by cosine 302 degrees I plus sine 302 degrees J. So we're going from here, and we're going like this here. So this will be 48, uh, see 58 degrees from here to our original uh, direction of the uh, airplane was 148. So it'd be uh, you knock 90 off that and you get 58. So you come up with a cosine 302 degrees I plus sine 30 degrees J. So knowing that, uh, our ground speed would equal and our ground speed is what we're calling our wind. When we knock our, uh, our wind off of it, we get 800 times cosine 310. So again here, we're knocking 90 degrees off this, and we end up with 50 here. So our actual speed of our uh, airplane after our wind effect would be 800 kilometers per hour. And then you multiply that by cosine 310i plus sine 310j. So now when we add a w plus v here, our w will equal u minus v. So we have this minus our v here. So our 800 minus our 860 uh, quantity over here. And we come up with this, these two numbers here, which is going to yield when we take our uh, absolute value of that, it's going to give us 130.35 kilometers per hour. So when we stick that into our arctan, we use our tan uh, function for that, we have 116.49 over 58.50, and we get 63.3 degrees. So the direction of our wind would be north 26.7 uh, east 
uh, uh, for the bearing of our wind for, from these calculations here. And that is your 6.3 part 3. Email me here for a solution PowerPoints and extra classwork sheets, extra homework sheets, and other materials for the course. Thank you very much.